So, um, here with Jason from Smokefield Lungs. Um, congratulations on the nominations for your film. Oh, thank you, Steve. I appreciate it. And no, and also thank you very much for attending and actually being here. It's, it's really appreciated. Oh, great. Um, it's always the same question I always open with this, which is um, because there's always a different reason. What's the background? How did the very this all start? What's the kernel of the, the interest in making this film? <laughs> well, that's a great great question, Steve. Um, basically, I did all the time in the military. I was a Navy SEAL. Yeah. And there's kind of a problem with veterans returning home. Like you saw uh, a, a lot of the other This is touched on in the film, we should say. Actually, oh, very much so, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. So like American Sniper, for example. I was really there on a lot of those ops. Right. And, you know, uh, Chris Kyle's platoon relieved mine. So there's a lot of movies out there that touch on uh, warfare and the actual being in the combat. But the long-term effects of coming home, there's been a few that have touched on it. But that is the kernel that started it. And I had a lot of friends that were having problems. And I was having problems myself transitioning. And, I mean, you spend your life in an institution like the military for 20 years and a lot of time in combat there are programs to help you but it's really hard to make that adjustment coming home and a lot of people you know if you're injured or things happen to you um, you get addicted to prescription drugs or other things and that's the basis of the movie it's about a vet that has a problem with prescription drugs and it's one of the biggest problems in the world right now and, and in the UK America oh, yeah, all yeah and I think from what I, I haven't seen it all I've seen some of the film um, but my understanding is, actually I've seen a lot of film, is it's the connection he's trying to make with um, one of his family members, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it's his nephew. nephew it's, yeah. And his nephew had lost his father in the war. Yeah. So this is any town America, USA, and you'd think, oh, that's too extraordinary. There's a kid that lost his dad and his uncle. That is a common story. I mean, there's a lot of people who have been involved in these wars. We were in, in Iraq and Afghanistan over twice as long as we were in World War II. Oh, and astounding. all of the coalition forces, again, Canada, U.S., Great Britain, Australia, all the people we worked with and many other countries around the world, I mean, they are facing this problem. And the VA wasn't set up to handle... Uh, this many people, you know, then and I'm sure all the same organizations in Europe uh, that there's so many vets that spent so much time in these wars now. I mean, I, mean, I, I would, I, I believe that. Um, I mean, I'm talking from a British point of view. The, the feeling was it wasn't going to last as long as it. No, did. no, absolutely, no, and that's it again. The SBS guys, SAS guys, all I work with, all those guys are brilliant, you know, and and that we all unfortunately i went to some of their funerals i came to some of ours and you know it's it's sad but those are your brothers and sisters in arms around the world you know so you you you've come back from physically experiencing uh physically and mentally experiencing this uh, war yes mentally. um and then obviously stuck in your mind you thought well, actually and uh, sorry what i'm trying to say is you're experiencing this, but did the idea for the story actually start? Or was it when you actually came out and you started thinking back and, and then thinking, do you know what, this story isn't being told? Or did it happen post, post you coming back? From tours of oh, I, or when you left the Marines? Yeah. No, I, absolutely. When, yeah, when I left the Navy SEALs, I mean, movies, festivals, this is a powerful, powerful thing, yeah. you know, and it's a great way to get a story out. And I've always been a storyteller in one way or another. And I had a knack for writing, and you know I didn't really know if I had a knack for filmmaking, but I, you know I got into it, and and we're doing okay. So um, it's a powerful medium to tell a story, and it's a way to get your story out that transcends political lines, racial lines, all those things, and you can reach everybody with a movie, you know. And if if it comes from your heart, and then the message comes from a place and you truly want to help people I think this is one of the best ways to, to reach the world yeah I, I mean I, absolutely I mean now we're all about independent films as you know oh this is the greatest this is the best festival I've been to oh that's really cool yeah it, it, you guys have it super organized super squared away and that the circuit that you have I mean this is growing and growing and I'm I am honored to be at the grassroots of it because I know I'm going to look back and people are going to go how, how did you get into that one <laughs> because it's it's I can see 
I can see where you guys are going, yeah, and it's yeah. big. Yeah, no, I, absolutely. I mean, we, it's gone. I mean, considering, I mean, we've been running ten years, but first time Milan, it's just gone mad. Yeah. I mean, the amount of entries is incredible. So you, you, you're working through this story. This is, although you've been into writing um, and created the creative side, you've never actually done anything film. Well, this. no, I, you know, I'm in SAG in the U.S. and I've been on some TV shows oh, and I've done right. some oh, acting. Oh, sure. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I've done a, quite a bit of acting and that's kind of what inspired me. And, and I had helped a person with another movie, an, an action movie. I helped him rewrite it and I helped him produce it. So that's where I was inspired as well to go, well, wait a minute, you know, I think I can do this myself. So you weren't thrown in the deep end is what I'm trying Well, to I was. It was pretty deep. <laughs> <laughs> it was right about me. oh no no yeah it, it, it was and it was a million times harder I mean I tell people this um, you know seal training is arguably one of the hardest in the world and people say that well making an independent film with a limited budget was like going through seal training no, and no. oh no no I tell people that but again I drove the grip an electric truck we had I mean I acted in it I co-directed it produced it wrote it so you're wearing a thousand different hats where just you know and, and a lot of these problems that you learn or solve you can't just throw money at them because it was oh if you had a five million ten million whatever but it has nothing to do with the money and, and i aspire to get to that level but i think what you learn making a low budget film where you have a small crew and you you know the, the, the best thing I came from this is you have to feed people well if you, if you feed people you know, well you that. take care of them and everyone's working for SAG minimums and the minimum you know that that uh, for the budget level but if you have a great caterer and we had one of the best in Hollywood that happened to be available and he liked the project and that's where I got a lot of favors. People enjoyed the script and liked it. So we ended up with some decent actors. We had a great script supervisor, a great cinematographer. I mean, we have an Italian award-winning cinematographer that read the script and said, I want to make this movie. And so I said, well, I can't pay. He goes, I don't care. Just I'm, I'm available. Let me make this movie with you. So that's what happens when, if you could send a good script out there, and people go, wow, that's pretty interesting. The, you, they'll come, you know, and, and that's what I'm learning as well. So that's where it has to start with, with really good writing. Yeah, and tell me about the casting. How did you manage to achieve that? Well, <laughs> well, you just, I mean, you run in circles, and again, living in Hollywood. So I had sent the script to some pretty big actors, well, Academy Award winners. One of them we couldn't negotiate properly with the with the management team, but that's again being so green. So what, they were t potentially interested. Oh no, they were interested, but we didn't have enough money because everyone hides and goes, "Oh, we only have five dollars or whatever," and really they have a hundred or you know. And I'm I'm speaking you know in, in smaller terms, yeah, yeah. but really that's all I had. So his manager said, "Well, we want this," and I said, "No, there there is no hidden money. If I had it, I would give it to you, but this is really all I have." So. We had another really big actor, loved the script, but he couldn't do it till November or December. I mean, we wouldn't have even made the movie yet, and I almost held out. But again, I had the money in the bank. We were green lit, and I said, no, no, I have to make this yeah, film. Yeah, it's only bits from yeah. yeah, so then we found Frankie, and Frankie was our, one of our first choices, but initially they said, well, he's on Banshees, you know, on Cinemax, he's sugar, he's busy. So he was actually my first choice but I thought well, we'll never get him because he's busy so then we circled back and I sent the stuff to Frankie Faison and so his manager said well Frankie's getting you know 20 scripts a week or whatever and it's it's gonna be hard but we sent him the script so 10 hours later he called me back and I thought it was I thought it was my buddy screwing with me and he's like hey this is Frankie Faison I'm like Hey, Brent, why are you messing with me, man? I'm busy. I'm trying to make this movie. But it really was Frankie. And I'm like, oh, yes, sir. You know, we started talking. And all of a sudden, you know, he goes, I love your script. He said, I'd love to come out and make the movie. So we were made an offer. We came to terms. Now I'm on the phone with Cinemax. I mean, here I don't know anything about And I'm talking to them, trying to negotiate a deal. And it worked out. So I would say at least I got a bachelor's degree you know and, and by making this movie and I didn't go to film school and you know that's the one thing I love about this industry is there's a million routes you can take 
And yeah, you can go to all the big schools and go to film, but you can also just dig it out of the dirt, you know, and you can end up in the same spot. So I read a lot of books, and I, luckily I surrounded myself with a great first AD, great cinematographer you know a great script supervisor and just people that really knew what they were doing and they made me look good because i was the only person there that didn't know how to make a movie i mean i knew how to act i knew how to hit a mark i knew the ideas of it and you know i'd read some books about how to direct and how to do stuff and i had practiced a little bit and you know i have another friend that's let me help make some commercials and stuff but i got there the first day and i'm like Everybody knew what to do but me. So, so you're always professional. Yeah. Right? Like, okay. Okay. Yeah. It's on, the shit's on me now. Yeah. And, and on Tuesday, you hear Tuesday when they've done the, um, the network. Yes. Uh -huh. Now, when I was watching that, I mean, I've, I've done loads of network events with Paul Brad's and Paul Brad yeah. right now. And all I kept thinking was, if I was a filmmaker right now listening to this, oh. the contractors, I'd be thinking, why the hell am I in this industry? Because to me, it seemed really confusing, yep, really um, worrying, because you've got to dot all those I's across those T's. How on earth do you, do you I mean, it, it, I, it was unfathomable to me, because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not going to find, I guess all you want to do is pick up a camera and shoot a film, <laughs> you have a paraphernalia, sure. you've got to take care of that. Oh, absolutely. So how do you deal with all of that? Well, I'll tell you what, that was one of the best, I mean, that was worth the, the festival right there, having that Q&A with those guys, brilliant, brilliant, and I, it, like I said, you have to get a good entertainment lawyer, and you learn. I've made some huge mistakes, Steve, along the way, but none of them are unfixable. And I'm kind of glad I've made them because I will never make them again. And before, you know, I looked at all these things in the movie industry like, oh, why would you need development money? And everyone's just trying to take money. It's all. But now I understand it. If you spend, the more time you spend in development and pre, the less mistakes you're going to make when you're trying to sell the film. And, and that's what I learned now that, no, 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 spend 60, 90 days in development and pre get all those contracts figured out beforehand because I just went, no, I'm going to go make this movie. And now we are going back and fixing all those things. But everything they said in that seminar, I mean, that right there, if anybody gets into any of your festivals and, and doesn't want to go, I, I'm going to go find them and slap them because they just to go and have that night with oh, those guys, it, it, it's they explain the movie business from A to Z. People pay lifetimes to get that much. And the way they broke it down and summarized it, again, the, it all comes back. Yeah, you got to get, get, get a good entertainment lower. And here's, yeah, make sure you have this. And all those terms, again, I've been digging out of the dirt by making mistakes over the last six months. And those guys are like, this is how it is. And everything they said, to my limited knowledge, was right on par yeah they're very good and they actually brilliant this to all the festivals or yeah and that right there i'm telling you that right there those guys and the, the 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 company they have and what they're doing that is that is a fast track and a shortcut to the top i think if you have some talent yeah. and some a product to sell those guys can get it sold for no, they're, you they're very, very they're brilliant good. yeah they and, and what was the most enjoyable part of the whole project of the movie? Yeah, everything you had to do. <laughs> well, I well, mean... I want to ask you about the painful part, because there's no doubt... Lots no, of no, no, no. I think, you know, it was surreal. And we just watched it again. And I have some friends here that watched it with me. But when I wrote it, and then I'm directing an actor like Frankie Faison, who's reading my lines. Is he, he was the one that was in... The grant, my grant, yeah. And yeah. Silence, Silence of the Lambs, yeah. 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 And, and, he, and he was in uh, Coming to America, yeah. and just uh, loads of other ones. But it, I had to, I kept pinching myself, you know, because I'm like, that guy's reading my lines, and I'm giving him direction. And that, there were days like that where it just felt like a dream. And I'm like, I cannot believe I'm sitting here making this movie. And these actors, Sean O'Brien is another mm -hmm. great actor that's been in tons of, and he's sitting there reading my lines and taking direction and talking to me about the character. Those were the, the moments that I will never, ever forget. And how do you talk, I mean, what's, because this is like a, um, I don't say a soul searching story, but it's almost a reflection of what you know. Yes. Really, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because you know, 
but what do you do after what's next well i have a movie called rivers and roads uh and where we've got some good actors attached i'm not going to tell you who yet no 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 not, <laughs> not this genre at all sound completely different well it's it's um it's a thriller mm -hmm. and it's um it's about smuggling and some other things and uh, but it has to do with governments and things so it's quasi military and along the same genre but it's it's getting some really good traction the script is, is very well received yeah. and we're wrapping up the funding and i have some really great actors attached to it and i'm excited to do that in, in the spring and uh, there's another one i wrote called feet per second and it's about human trafficking and it crosses many international borders as well and uh, i was in indonesia and there's a couple other artists that were in this festival wow. that uh, I, I work with one of the the top directors in indonesia uh damien and oh, yeah yeah so wow. yeah yeah see so, you know yeah. yeah so so damien and i talked about a couple concepts together and he's got it indonesia wired yeah, and yeah. with and so it's i said well yeah oh I, so I said hey man why don't we do something together and i have a script that touches on that so i'm going to go see him in a couple weeks and we're going to talk about doing something as well so brilliant yeah he's a great guy <laughs> Jason, thank you yeah thank you wonderful See, i really appreciate it